Mm -hmm. I think we should brew a coffee. Okay. And keep talking while we drink it. Sounds great. What is the next or first step? Do we have to preheat something or can we just... Okay, serve? I'm going to give it a small flush um, just to get the metal a little bit hotter. Yeah. And uh, we're going to use 22 grams of coffee. Really coarse grind. Like for most grinders, it'll be about the coarsest setting it can okay. accomplish. And it's actually the same grind I would use for a Fetco or similar commercial batch brew machine. Just go, uh, keep going if you want. Um, of course. Okay. Right now we just did the pre-wet. So for about 10 seconds, the machine dispensed um, six milliliters per second. We're using 22 grams of grounds and 60 grams of water for the pre-wet. Now there is a 30 second bloom. During the bloom, all the grounds are getting wet and a little bit of the water will leak out of the coffee bed, but most of the water will get absorbed by the grounds. And then after 30 seconds, now the machine is going to begin dispensing about two milliliters per second. And then as the machine progresses through the different pulses, the flow rate will drop slowly, as will the temperature. We're designing it so that the initial temperature is rather high to get the uh, whole coffee bed very hot. And then once the coffee bed is up to temperature, the applied water temperature drops slowly so that the slurry temperature stays relatively constant. If you want to look inside with me, yeah. there's no harm in taking it off since there's no pressure. You I can look, see that yeah. it's maintaining a relatively uh, kind of you know, medium height in there and the water is just spraying equally around the uh, coffee yeah, slurry. Actually, for me, there is a difference between that system and the mellow drip, because in the mellow drip, I often saw that um, there was kind of a, I don't know how to say it, but there was clean water up yes, there. Yes. Now we have like something like foam. It's, yes. It seems that there are more particles up in yes. the water swimming there. We, we definitely have more turbulence yeah. than the mellow drip, but not a very high turbulence. Like you could have with a kettle with a directed pour. So it's, it's about a medium amount of turbulence between yeah. the two extremes. Scott, I really can imagine that this is a nice brew of, in a coffee shop. Yes, that, um, that's I mean, my goal. That, okay. <laughs> yeah, is, I mean, of course, people will use this at home. I use it at home because sometimes I'm lazy in the morning yeah. and it's very nice. And you have a decent. But we've all been in coffee shops, whether as baristas or as customers, where ordering a hand pour is um, yeah. very challenging because they're very busy. The hand pour takes the barista off the bar for a few minutes. And to be honest, uh, the, cons the results can be a little bit variable. Yeah. And I think that what this offers is less labor, less barista time and very consistent results. I think this is also why you went for the coarser grind. Yeah, so, so in this case, because there's no possibility of bypass, yeah. we needed a bit of a coarser grind to get the liquid through the bed. Of course, with a V60 or Kalita, because there is some bypass, you end up grinding a little finer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think we're done. Yes, yeah, so it'll, the machine is done, but it'll take another minute for the, all the liquid to drain from the basket. This is actually a nice and interesting moment. Many people often ask me if there's still water mm -hmm. on my drip um, filter. Is it influencing my brew? Mm. If, we, if I have to wait like one minute more, right. I want it to finish at two and a half minutes. Actually, there's not happening a lot right now. There's not so much extraction going on. No, it is, it is very low extraction at the end for sure, because yeah. I've done things where say I measure, maybe I use 17 to one ratio, maybe I stop at 14 to one and then let, you know, and pull the carafe away, put a different carafe in its place, measure the extraction or the TDS and then the extraction of both parts. And much more than 90% of the extraction is already done uh, yeah. after the 14 to one. This is what I'm also That, that said, say. I mean, if, if the extraction is pretty even, uh, and you're not using uh, too high of a ratio, usually that, that extra bit gets the strength in order and gets you a little more extraction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think with these kind of methods, if you went to say 18 to one, 20 to one, you would get those woody stale flavors that you get from um, trying to push a little bit too far. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You sent mm -hmm. me uh, on um, Christmas, I will get one. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but I'm really curious also to give it a try to maybe brew just 250 milliliters mm -hmm. maybe sure. with 24 or 22 grams mm -hmm. and then that would be configurating yeah. the, sure. the, the whole brew by bypassing um, yes. instead of going through the I, whole. I've done that and it, it definitely works. Yeah. Um, what I like about the current system is that um, 
when I can, if it's possible to use a coarser grind with filter, I, I generally prefer that mm -hmm. because you have less issues with uh, potentially too many fines, clogging, things like that. Um, but you definitely could go a little stronger and then dilute for sure. Shall we go for a coffee? Yes, let's try. I thought you would never ask. What me. did you brew? Uh, I brewed a natural Colombian from my company Prodigal. It's called El Refugio. Uh -huh. It's a natural pink bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, you know that I love pink bourbon. I do as well. We I think have it's... like 200 plants on our coffee farm. Oh yeah. You know, they are really struggling with um, climate. They mm -hmm. are not that resistant, but if they give crop, they are often yeah, They're awesome, so beautiful. Huh? Yeah. I think it's my favorite variety. Really? Yes. yes. I didn't know that. Yes. I really love it. I competed in a Brewers Cup championship with a pink bourbon. How do you feel about the extraction quality? I have a lot of sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't guess that it is made with a decent espresso machine, sure. actually. Sure. Mm, I think we can work on it mm -hmm. still. But course, I, I like it, yeah. Oh, we will never stop working. No, I mean, but there's the sweetness. I have a little astringency, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but actually just a little. Um, yep. And I think it's really clever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it is so clever to have it in a machine. And I think there's all the potential to, to reuse it in a coffee shop. It's helping so much. And um, I think it would be awesome to have it in a blind tasting. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. it would be, um, if we have 100 or 50 filter coffees, mm -hmm. it would be difficult to say if this is a decent or a nicely brewed sure. with a drip coffee. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I did a video with Lance uh, about yeah. this once and... Greetings. He made, <laughs> he made a V60 and, and I made this and uh, my goal wasn't to say it's going to taste better, yeah. but um, you, know, you can get to the equivalent quality with, with no effort. Yeah. Um, and that was really the goal. And I mean, you're absolutely right about how to install it in the in a coffee shop it's always busy as you mm. said how to how to fit it in a whole process mm. and i often see coffee shops planned in a way where you lose money because of the because of the design of the coffee shop mm -hmm. and if i now have this I installed in my espresso machine setup mm -hmm. as an easy way to make a nice and fast drip coffee mm -hmm. I, I really like it i mm. like it as an idea and i'm looking forward and you told me that some coffee shops have already one, and I'm a bit mm -hmm. jealous, you know, <laughs> um, that in our coffee shop is none, because I think this would be a good help. Well, you just have to wait till Christmas. Okay, <laughs> I will. Thank you so much okay, for visiting. For and also, yeah, first time I had a roast of coffee from you, or a brew from a roasted coffee from you. Awesome. My pleasure. Thank you. And um, if you're interested in learning more about Scott's work, you have to check his website. You have to check. Do you have a YouTube channel? Ah, uh, no. Soon. soon. Um, <laughs> but a really interesting, interesting um, Instagram um, um, profile and yeah, the blogs and the books are always recommended. So have a look. And I think it's it. You are a great teacher for the whole coffee community. Thank, Thank you for your work. I appreciate and thanks that. for visiting us. All right. Thanks for having me, Ben. This is our video about the new Filter 3.0. I think we will keep close to it. We will have a look when it's on the market and tell you more. We have a new YouTube channel in English. We will create more videos in English in the future. And if you are interested in yeah, having a look in our videos, please um, consider visiting us over there and also subscribe on our Coffee, Coffee Macher English channel. Bye and see you at the next time.